Good morning, Advent. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. I'll have to find my way around the bell tables. It's always a wonderful thing to have the bells for us this evening or this morning. Uh, don't take that as a cue that I've had a bad night, okay? <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine, truly. Welcome to visitors and guests who are with us on this day as we praise the Lord and hear the word and be nourished by it. Chief among our guests today is Jennifer Noel, who comes and brings us the gift of music and worship leadership, and we are most grateful for that. Thank you so much. Yes. And all of this, of course, as all of you have heard, is because our dear Fred Meads took a fall this past week and broke a hip and has gone through surgery and is doing just fine, and we're glad for that, but we will continue certainly to pray for Fred uh, in the coming weeks as he continues to mend and as he continues, uh, I'm sure, to go through rehabilitation and all to the end of coming back to us as soon as it is possible to come back. So we give thanks for all of those. The reason that we have Jennifer and so many others for the next several weeks truly is because Fred is so well loved. Would you attest to that, Jennifer? Yes, I remember that. Yes. <laughs> and because he's loved, people want to help out, and we're so grateful for that. So hold Fred in your prayers. We've also had a prayer request for Suzanne Spencer, who is a member of the Bergstrom family, but she's in critical condition in a hospital in Ithaca, New York. Are there other announcements to share for the good of? Yes. Next Sunday, you can get your picture taken with the empower or take your picture out by the elevator. So we'll check off and see if you have your picture taken. If you have it, we'll throw you in the booth and you take your picture. <laughs> I think we need to make up a hymn for that, you know, get your picture taken now. Okay, but thank you. Uh, so we'll make sure that all those photos are taken. Advent Scott Talent will be on the docket for this community for February 23rd. There's an insert for that. We certainly encourage you to bring your talent to the forefront so that we can all appreciate that and have a wonderful evening of fun and fellowship. Other announcements for the good of? May the Lord bless your worship in this place. All who are able, would you please stand for the order of the forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the eternal voice from heaven, the anointed and beloved one, the spirit moving over the waters. As we approach the mystery of God, let us come in confession, trusting the love of Christ, crucified and risen. God, who searches us and knows us, you have shown us what's good, but we have looked to other lights to find our way. We have not been just in our dealings with others. We have chosen revenge over mercy. We have promoted ourselves instead of walking humbly with you. With what shall we come before you? Forgive us our sin and show us your salvation in the face of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloved of God, you have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, poured out for you in the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. Receive the promise of baptism. You are God's child. Your sins are forgiven. Rejoice and be glad, for yours is the reign of heaven.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, your loving kindness always goes before us and follows us after us. Summon us into your light and direct our steps in the ways of goodness that come through the cross of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Isaiah. But there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them the light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Psalm 27 read responsively. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You who have been my help, do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by closed people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are saved, it, who are saved, it is the power of God. The word of the Lord. John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, 
so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father, Zebedee, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every illness among the people. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We'd like the children to come over, please. Come on up. Any and all tables. And Mrs. Blevins is going to come up and give me a hand here in just a little bit. Before we do that, I'd like to ask you a question. What are you afraid of? Yes, the dark. How many of you are afraid of the dark? Okay, you know what, me too, me too. What else are you afraid of? Any of you? Uh, If there's a monster in there, you bet, okay. And you know what, that's really important. You know, you never know where those monsters are gonna be, truly, all right? It might be under the bed, they might be in the closet, but you know what, here's what I'm gonna, yeah, or outside. Here's what I would like to give you a gift today to help you with the things that you're afraid of. And it is a song. The next time you're feeling afraid, there's a song that I would like you to sing to yourself, okay? And Mrs. Blevins is gonna help me with it. Where if we can do it, I'll teach it to you first, and then maybe we can turn it into a round, okay? You know what a round is, don't you? Okay, so here's the song, it, and it comes from today's song. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life, is the first verse. The second verse is, whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? Of whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? It goes like this. The Lord is the, what, excuse me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? Of whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? You ready to sing with me? And you can even clap if you want. We'll do this. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. Now sing that with me, okay? The Lord is the strength of my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. Now, of whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? Of whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? Are you, think you up for a, a round? This side will help, okay? Because we're gonna start out with you, all right? So you will start and sing, The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength 
uh, of my highlight. And then you are going to come in with the Lord is my life, okay? And Sammy's going to lead. Make sure you people get in. And let's divide you right down the middle here, okay? You, 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 and you are going to be on my side. And the rest of you are going to be on Mrs. Blevins' side. Are you ready? Let's give it a go. One, two, three. This side first. Are you ready? The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? Of whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is the light of my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? Of whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? Of whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? Of whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? Awesome! Everybody did really well. Give yourself a hand. Yes, indeed. So the next time you're afraid, you remember that the Lord is your light and your salvation. And because God loves you, no reason to be afraid, okay? Because God will always be there. Let's bow our heads and let's hold our hands and let's talk to God. Thank you, God, for always walking with us and always being with us. And thank you, God, for giving us light in Jesus. Help us not to be afraid and help us to trust in you. Amen. Thank you. You may have a seat. Thank you, Mrs. Blevins, for helping out. And thank all of you for your good singing. <laughs> Pastor Connie sings the hit tunes for you. <laughs> Boy, you know, camp songs, you can just use them any old way, can't you? You know, love it. Terrific. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, I don't care how old you are. I don't care how many or how few life experiences you have been able to add to your own personal life resume. There are times when we all say, if I had known then what I know now, I might have done things differently. It's all by design. We are blind to the future. And that's a good thing, really. I know we've said this before in sermons. If we knew what was around every blind corner or could calculate the results of every weighty decision that we make, we would find ourselves absolutely paralyzed with fear. There is wisdom to be found in not knowing too much. And you know, as I encounter this particular gospel reading for this Sunday in the Epiphany Cycle, I can't help but affirm the correctness of that kind of thinking. With the proper setting, and as this text introduces the disciples at the very earliest moment in what would become a three-year relationship with Jesus, this could read like the script of a suspense movie. We know how the story unfolds. We know every twist and turn to the plot. We anticipate every character, even and especially the antagonists. We've committed to memory the dialogue and the debates. We know how the story begins, but most important, we also know how the story ends. Having said all of that, and still knowing that not knowing is the better part of wisdom, I have to say that every time I read how these Galilean fishermen blindly drop their nets and follow Jesus, I still have this incredible urge to reach into this dramatic moment, grab each of these men by their shoulders, shake them up a bit, and say to them, do you have any idea? what you are getting into. Do you have even the faintest clue 
where this will lead. Don't you want to think it over just a little bit? Maybe say, I'm going to go home, Jesus. Let me sleep on it, and I'll get back to you. This may be more of an adventure, dear disciples, than any of you have bargained for. And so I want to say, and perhaps you join me in this, think twice, gentle fishermen. Don't be too impulsive. There may come that moment when you too will say to yourselves, if I'd known then what I know now. Well, we're not invited into the thought processes of these neophyte disciples. And retrospective is a funny and a somewhat quirky thing as well. It can either cause you to romanticize the past or demonize it. It's hard for us to find an in-between in those, but somewhere in between those extremes lay the truth of this very blind journey into the way of discipleship. You know, there are so many amazing aspects of the journey of faith in Jesus Christ, and most of them have, as a starting point, the element of surprise, a collision of circumstances that sets up the wholly unexpected conclusion, the good and true definition of the beginning of life of faith in Christ is holy baptism. But from that beginning, a whole sequence of new beginnings keep piling up along the way. For instance, if you reflect upon your own life of faith, think about this. The first time that you grasped the significance of being part of the whole body of Christ, of something that was so much bigger, so much more expansive than even your weekly church experience. The first moment, perhaps, that you really woke up to the fact that your faith might set you up for ridicule or scorn. When the expedient course of action at work did not somehow jive with your own sense of right or wrong, and you had to take a stand and the epic moments in your life when life and death pushed you through the walls of day-to-day -day normal and decisions had to be made, perhaps serious decisions for those that you loved, you would never have believed that you could have had the ability, the wherewithal, the internal resilience to face any of those hurdles, and if you had the ability to look into the future and see yourself dealing with each and every situation as it came your way, you would have shaken your head and you would have said, that's not me. I can't do that. I'll cave under the weight of it all. And yet, here you are. The one Jesus chose to follow him, you, the one Jesus has called into discipleship. In most cases, let's be honest about it, you didn't have any real choice in the matter. Because you see, your parents brought you to Jesus and they gave you to Jesus. And if they'd given even a blink of a second thought to their decision to do so, they might well have backed out of the deal at the very last minute. So, the fishing nets that represent predictable and uninvolved living, the routine of our life, those get tossed to the side. And they did through baptism for you. And those decisions were made by someone else. You have followed. At times you followed because that's what everyone else knew that you knew did the same thing. There have been moments of genuine beauty in this journey, in this experience, times when you felt lifted out of yourself 
and experiencing a spiritual moment of reckoning that was truly transcendent. And you've made it so far. Blind to the moments. Blind to God's sustaining grace to get you through. And even in the midst of those transcendent moments, you are still blind as can be to the future. Except, and there is one gargantuan exception in all of that notion about what you know, what you don't know. While we are not privy to the details, we are nonetheless given eyes to see what is most important. And what is most important is that the future is grounded in a promise. The future belongs to God. We know how the story ends for us because we've witnessed the resurrection of the firstborn of the dead, Jesus Christ. The same Jesus who issued this invitation to follow him. You see, our story is forever bound to his story. The promise is this. Where Christ is, we too shall always be. It is a promise that can never be broken and will never be broken. No expiration dates. It's never nullified. Even if we run away from Jesus and decide that we would much rather pick up those mundane fishing nets and live as if faith didn't matter, Jesus still stays close by. It's out of our hands. We do know that we belong to Jesus forever. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. We each have our own stories to tell about walking in darkness. So too can we speak of what it means to see light, to be bathed in light. I don't know how many of you over in this side particularly, you walked in here this morning and there was this blinding light coming through. It can be a distraction, but you know, the reality is that it's absolutely wondrous and beautiful. That's the kind of light we're talking about being bathed in. Having known darkness and light, we are compelled to tell others that light is better than darkness. That is the work of witnessing to the gospel. Today's reading from Matthew is very often used as a starting point for talking about our calling to share the story of Jesus with others. We use words like witness, evangelism, bringing others to Jesus is what it amounts to, and they are words that point to duties that have challenged and vexed the very traditional and very private piety of Lutherans over the decades, over the centuries. You remember Garrison Keeler, Lake Wolbegon? The reason we found him so amusing was because what he said was true. We know all about what it means to be shy or reluctant about sharing our faith with others. It isn't the Lutheran way. And we are still inclined to believe that the work of telling the story of Jesus is best left to those who are either the professionals, you can do that much better than I can, pastor, those who have more biblical knowledge than us, or those who have effervescent personalities and are more outgoing than us. Because faith feels so private and so personal that in the end it just about terrifies us. Well, guess what? It is personal. It has to be personal. Christian witness is not exclusively clothed in the neo-evangelism that we see in this day and age. It's not clothed in the visage of slick television evangelists with perfectly straight teeth and perpetual smiles. The most profound witnessing that takes place is found in the dark and in the shadows of fear and doubt. 
And if you have been in that valley of the shadow of death, then you have a story to tell. Truth is, those stories are far more authentic because they have shared, been shared fearlessly and without a scintilla of shame or hesitancy. You've been down and you have been swathed in the darkness. And if all of those things have happened to you and if they have happened repeatedly, which most assuredly they have, light will change you. You know that. And if you have been drawn to light, you will want to speak of that same light to others. Well, the Galilean fishermen did end up fishing for people. Of the 12 men who comprised the inner circle of disciples, and make no mistake, there were others who followed Jesus. They just didn't get the press. But of those 12 that we know of that followed Jesus, 11 of them died violent deaths because of their witness to the light. They died as martyrs because they chose the light of Christ over the darkness of the world. Their witness and their obedience grew the fellowship of followers. If they had known how their individual stories ended, who knows? They might well have picked up those dropped nets and changed their minds. Their blindness to the details of the future was indeed overcome by God's future for them and for the world. So they did follow, and so do we. And in the end, what we don't know pales in comparison, truly pales in comparison to what we do know, that God is light, and God calls us to be light for a dark and fearful world. Amen.
God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. Called together through water and the word, we boldly pray for the church, the world, and all who long to hear God's voice. Holy One, your voice calls us to follow. Thank you for raising up missionaries in every generation and for all who create communities of grace today. Open our hearts to serve you near and far. Lord, in your mercy. Maker of all, we rejoice in the beauty and abundance of the earth. Unite us in our shared calling to be stewards of creation, to reduce waste, and to simplify our lives for your sake. Lord, in your mercy. Ruler of all, thank you for those who run for local and national office and all who serve as elected leaders. Gather wise and courageous voices together that your mercy and justice would dawn upon all people and all nations. Lord, in your mercy. Healer of all, thank you for sanctuary and for safety. Uplift all whose lives are governed by fear and evil. Give refugees and all who seek safety a path toward hope and new life. Grant healing and wholeness to all who are sick, lonely, or grieving. Especially this day we lift before you all whom we name in the silence of our hearts, and we pray especially for Fred, and we pray for Suzanne. Lord, in your mercy. God of courage, thank you for faithful teachers and evangelists in this and every place. Inspire our faith formation and efforts with all generations as you call us to follow you. Bless our children, our youth and adults who engage in learning. Lord, in your mercy. Risen Christ, we marvel at the meaning of your resurrection. Give us faith to place all hope in you as we give thanks for the faithful departed. May their witness help us follow your call. Lord, in your mercy. We place our prayers before you, God, united in your spirit. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share with one another the sign of Christ's peace.
Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Amen. You may be seated.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now may almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.